take the little sock on like this. Oh. I deserve that whip right there. I desire to pull up to that big house in my night. So you guys are here to learn how to make this Berea in the crock pot. It looks so good, right? Just keep on watching and we're going to get started. So the first thing that I'm going to be using is this Chuck Pot Roast. This is what I've been using for the meal. This is my second time actually making it too and it came out amazing. So Javon is cutting the meat into fours. Sorry about the quality of the video. Some videos will be um, kind of like, I guess, upside down. Not upside down, but like short like this because I was recording on my phone. But he's cutting with his very dull knife. Don't worry about that. But as long as you guys get cutting fours. So now we're going to do the seasoning. You need bay leaves. You're going to need like this little bouillon cube. And I'm going to be showing you guys the measurements for each um, seasoning. So you guys are going to need a tablespoon of salt and um these rest of these seasonings so i pretty much show you what i'm doing so i'm gonna allow, allow you guys to you know just look and study me talking and then i'm gonna come back okay so i'm back i do want to let you guys know that i kind of did my own thing when it came to how i did it in the crock pot i did watch some videos on youtube on how to make the burrito in a crock pot but i kind of did it different than the lady that i watched so what she did was just add the seasoning to the water and stuff and then just put a meat in i'm going to be making this into a paste so i'm just basically just continuing to you know measure out my seasonings and i am going to have this in the description box in detail so you guys don't have to sit here and figure out like what seasonings i'm using this creole seasoning too that wasn't in the video but i like the seasoning on any meat that I'm cooking so I decided to just throw it in there for an extra little kick um and then you got the cumin seasoning and all that stuff and then we're going to use some thyme again I'm going to have the exact measurements in the description box so you guys don't have to figure out you know <laughs> what I use um but yeah I pretty much use some seasonings that I normally would use in my everyday meals or whatever so that's what I did so now we're going to do the peppers so set aside three cups of water so that you can um put the peppers in there so these peppers I got from like my local um mexican like shop or whatever that they have they have like all these different types of seasonings that you probably won't find at your local grocery stores so i went there and basically i'm going to be frying garlic and a half an onion and these peppers and then some grease some oil so i don't have that much grease in the skillet but when you are going to be frying these peppers you want to make sure that you don't burn them because it's going to leave a better taste so what i'm basically doing is trying to check and see if the oil is hot enough it's not that hot so that's why this pepper is in there a little bit longer but um once the grease is hot as soon as you put the pepper in there, it's going to turn like this bright red and you literally just leave it in there for like maybe two to three seconds and then you're going to take it out so i'm trying to show you guys in real time because i didn't want to speed up the video and then you guys get confused so um once i did that i put all the peppers onions and garlic in this water on and i let it sit on the side for like probably like five minutes because you basically what you want to do is rehydrate the peppers so that we can make our paste so once it sits in there and everything is kind of like soft then i'm going to put it in the blender all together with the seasoning and all that liquid and then we're just going to blend it and it's going to make a very tasty sauce if you guys got the measurements right of course you guys can add um as you guys go along um and you can add your own little spices if you want to um but yeah so just put it in, into the blender with everything else and again i'm showing you guys in real time because i don't want any confusion so we're gonna do all that i forgot to mention that the peppers that i use make sure you guys take those seeds and the insides out before you fry them i definitely forgot to tell y'all that but yeah make sure you get, take the insides out so once all of that is blend it all together like so we're going to go back to the crock pot and i'm going to show you guys what you need to do so we're going to be putting those four pieces of beef well chuck 
in the um, crock pot and Javon put some salt and pepper on there just to season the meat a little bit and then we're going to pour that paste on top and then you guys are going to also see me put the other half of that onion that we didn't use and two bay leaves I believe into this so now that the paste is done you do want to add water to the crock pot so that the meat is covered because you want to make sure that all the meat is covered so it's like gonna cook really really good so that's what I did I added some water just so I can cover the meat and then we're gonna cook this on high okay and you guys see me right here adding the water but we're gonna cook this on high for about six hours because altogether the total cook time was about seven a little bit over seven hours so at that six hour you want to kind of like check and make sure you know everything is cooking maybe switch some stuff around and stuff like that so yeah we're gonna cook it on high like I said for six hours and then we're gonna check it so in the meantime I did want some guacamole because I really love guacamole so what you're gonna need is just like some onions it really depends on like how much you need we did cut up I think another half an onion because we're gonna be using some for the sauce at the end and I'm gonna be using some for my guacamole so um, you're also going to need some cilantro for the sauce to dip your taco in. And then I'm also going to be putting some in my guacamole. So it really just depends on how much you want to use. And it really depends on if you're making guacamole. If you're not making guacamole, skip this step. But you do want some onions and cilantro for the end once your meat is done. And you're going to want some to throw into that broth. And you're going to need some to um, put in your taco too. So that's what you guys see us doing right now. Whenever we're adding cilantro and onions together, we always put lime in there. So that's what you guys are going to see us do right now. Just squeezing half of a lime on there and I think we might save the other line for the taco I'm not sure because I've been recorded this video but I'm just not getting it out to you guys but yeah you definitely need some lime it just brings everything together now that all of that is cut up we're going to continue to make the guacamole so Javon is showing you guys how to take the pit out nice and clean and smooth and then we're just gonna put that avocado in the bowl with some onions and cilantro salt and pepper all of that good stuff smushing around and we're gonna set that to the side I do want to say that cooking this is really time consuming as far as like preparation but the crock pot does most of the work as far as the meat part but it's just like a little size that you will want um, to eat the burrito with that will probably take a little time but after you do all this child the food is so good like it comes out so tender and like flavorful it's ridiculous okay and this is like our second time making it i'm thinking about making it again for the third time because it's just that good so um Finishing off the guacamole, we use the other half of that lime. We're going to throw some onions and cilantro in the avocado with the salt and pepper that you guys saw earlier. And then we're just going to mix it up. And that's basically it for the guacamole. Guacamole really depends on like how you want it. And even if you even like guacamole at home, child, you don't even have to make it. But <clears throat> it's been about seven hours um, in the crock pot. And this is how the meat is looking. It's bubbling. The meat was getting so tender. You do want to make sure that you kind of like take that bay leaf out that I didn't show. But yeah, the meat is done, okay? And as you guys can see, you want to just get like a little plate on the side, you know, shred it up for the tacos. So that's, that's what Javon is doing. It really helps having a significant other in the kitchen with you because it can really get overwhelming trying to do everything by yourself. So he's on the meat and then I'm on the tacos. So I'm going to be using some extra virgin olive oil and a very hot skillet. And then I have some of that oil from the meat so that the tacos can kind of look red. That's where they get the color from. It is a lady on YouTube that makes her own um, oil for these tacos, but I just feel like this is how I wanted to do it. So I just poured some regular olive oil and some of that oil from the meat on the taco shell just so, to give it that color. And then we're just going to fry it on up. Okay, these are corn shells. I like my corn shells oily. That's just my preference. So. We're just going to fry them on both sides and then you're going to add the meat. You're going to add onions and cilantro inside of there. And if you like cheese, you can add cheese 
my fiance doesn't like cheese so he didn't make um his with cheese but i put cheese in mine because i really like cheese so um again i'm showing you guys in real time because i want you guys to really get a gist of like how long i'm cooking the taco for and stuff like that and this skillet is probably like on a medium heat i never really cook on high heat it's always like medium and low medium the highest so um once you cook that shell on both sides, and that's when you're going to add your onions and cilantro, the meat, and cheese. I believe this first one that I'm making is not going to have cheese in it because, like I said, Javon doesn't eat cheese. So his is just going to have the onions and cilantro and the meat in there. So now we're just going to fold it right up and then we're just going to take it out. And this is how your taco sub should basically look. I'm sorry, I'm getting tons at y'all. Like, <laughs> it's been a long day. So now I'm going to show you guys how I make mine, which is basically the same exact way how I made the first one. But I'm just adding cheese, okay? Because I love cheese and it's going to help everything just marry together and like stick together. So that's how I'm doing the second one. to switch to the real camera but got that and you want to get some broth you want to get some broth put some onions and cilantro in here to dip your tacos in take the little taco like that The lighting is horrible because my phone has so much light and it's not focusing there you go. And that is basically it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys make it at home, let me know below. But that's it. Peace.